and it just it got me thinking like has med school changed me Good morning, today is Wednesday, and we have a lot of lectures today. Alrighty, so I just uploaded my Wednesday video, which is all about my ab workout, plus I kind of go in and explain about ab anatomy. This kind of video is pretty off-brand for the channel, but you know what, if it helps one person, if somebody takes a study break and exercises, you know what, that is, that's good. I don't really know, like, what I'm gonna do with this channel and clerkship. I kind of want to make rotation specific videos, like long form videos. That's the goal, but I've heard clerkship's pretty busy, so I don't know, stay tuned. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Okay, so we just had two more lectures. One was on COVID in pediatric patients, which was really interesting. And something that's weird is that they're like working so hard to pump out studies really fast. I don't know, what am I trying to say? They're trying to pump out literature really quickly to inform like clinical decision making. But it's crazy, like one of these studies, when it was published, the people that they were studying were like still in hospital. I've been handwriting notes out just because I find it's the easiest way not to get distracted. I find if I'm like typing on my computer, listening to a Zoom lecture, uh, it's very easy to like open Instagram, YouTube, whatever, just because you're on your computer. So I don't touch my computer, I just play the lecture and then I'm handwriting things. Um, why am I not using my iPad? I don't know, because I don't feel like it. People always ask that question. Um, I'm just like very inconsistent. These are rough notes, so I'm just writing them out for the purpose of like paying attention and absorbing the information. Also, I just purchased two books. Our faculty recommended that we just pick a textbook, it doesn't really matter which one it is, and just go through it from start to finish, read the whole thing. Obviously, that's like not a great study technique, but I think the rationale behind that is that they want us to at least have read about everything that would come up in the specialty of medicine that we're rotating through, because the reality is we're not going to see every disease that's possible. Hopefully we'll get a good representation, but we will be examined on everything. And then as we proceed, we kind of are expected to know everything within a specialty of medicine. We shall see. I will let you know when they arrive and we can talk about them together. I can let you know my thoughts at the end of the rotation. All right, so I'm going to head out for a quick run. Lately, it has been so hot out lately, which is not a bad thing, you know, it's nice that it feels like summer, but when it's really warm, I just don't like to run. Ooh. Okay, I'm home. I'm very sweaty, it's very sunny out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna jump in the shower super quick and hopefully make it in time for the one o'clock lecture. Okay, so it is 3.42, I'm feeling pretty tired. I'm gonna do this 15 minute boho beautiful guided meditation. Um, sometimes I do guided meditation if I think I just like can't meditate for 15 minutes without getting super sidetracked. So yeah, that's the game plan. So Hannah just came over. I totally forgot to film it, but we practiced some clinical skills. We did a neuro exam practice. In my opinion, the neurological clinical skills physical exam is one of the more challenging ones, especially at the med student level, just because there are so many things to remember um, because you have like 12 cranial nerves. So you have to know how to test those and what they look like normally versus abnormally. And then you have all the dermatomes and myotomes that you have to test. You also have to test your upper and lower body reflexes. And then you have special tests to look for things like Parkinson's, nerve compression, just like general coordination. So that was really good to review. I definitely forgot 
a lot. So I was about to start my AD cards and I was like, wait a minute, I can live stream. I'm just gonna study for the next two hours. So I might as well do it with some friends on the internet. Also, if you have been joining the live stream study with me sessions, um, I'm sorry, this schedule is so sporadic. Um, our schedule is based off of whenever faculty are available to teach. So what this means is some days we have like one lecture and other days like today, we have like six, seven lectures. So yes, it's not really possible to have a consistent schedule. So consider subscribing and turning on notifications. Subtle, subtle plug. But honestly, if you turn on notifications, then you'll get like pinged when the live stream studying happens if you need a study buddy. So I was watching some old YouTube videos on the channel, as one does. Um, no, I'm not a crazy person. I just wanted to create a playlist of like my favorite videos. There's only four in here right now because I don't actually remember all of the videos, but I went back and watched a couple from first year. So I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but the reason why I created this channel was partly because I felt Canadian medical schools were very underrepresented on YouTube and when I was a pre-med I really had no idea what med school was like nobody really vlogged it and I kind of relied on med school vloggers from the United States to like base my opinions on med school off of so that was one reason I was like I can be that person in Canada but the second was like a more personal reason I wanted to create like memories of medical school. Interestingly though, I've never really gone back and watched the vlogs that much, but making this playlist had me watching some from first year and it just, it got me thinking like, have I changed? Has med school changed me? I don't know, the, the vlogs were a bit shocking in the sense that I was just so goofy. I don't wanna lose like the fun side of me. So here's the thing, I love school supplies. Oh yeah. What? It's very cold out, so I'm wearing me hat. I got all reminiscent down my own YouTube rabbit hole. It's currently one in the morning, so maybe that's why this is happening. So, yeah. I clearly slept in. Um, it's fine, we had one lecture, one lecture today, and it was from nine to 10 p.m. I mean, nine to 10 a.m. What am I saying? We have one lecture today and I missed it. So hopefully it was recorded and then I can just rewatch it. Anyways, let's go make some breakfast. I really like this wrap dress. It's very comfy, very summer. I don't really wear dresses that much. The fabric kind of reminds me of something like your grandma's curtains or like grandma's couch fabric would look like. I don't know. What do you guys think? Does anyone else struggle to stay on top of the dishes? Like I consider myself kind of a clean person, but when it comes to dishes, I just, I can't. I don't know why. I just like, uh, it's so much work to make food and then you eat it and then you're tired and you're like, oh, I'll just put the dishes in the sink. I'll wash them later and then tomorrow comes and you're like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. So it's now 4 p.m. I have not done any schoolwork today. I mostly cleaned, but somehow the house doesn't look any cleaner. How is, how is that possible? Anyways, I have a Zoom meeting with Jennifer. Uh, we're working on our flex paper. She's away right now, so we're just doing that over video conference and hopefully we get some stuff done. Thursday. I'm just making some coffee. It's almost the end of the week. 
we have a lecture at 9 a.m. I have to say, as much as it's hard to pay attention, and it's not the most active learning environment being on Zoom, it is kind of nice being able to sleep in, not having to get ready. You can show up right on the dot of time. You can get up, go to the bathroom, make a snack. You know, there are perks. So, as much as I whine and whinge about, oh, online school's so hard, I think if it was in person, I would also be sad that it wasn't online. <laughs> I don't know, there's no winning. Hi, hey, hello. So we just finished our lectures for the morning. Um, the last one was on pediatric palliative care, which I think I need to just kind of prepare for peds. I think it will be one of the rotations that's like kind of sad slash depressing. I think people always have this perception that pediatrics is fun and you get to work with kids. And I'm sure it is fun, but the reality is usually it's like really sick kids. And in pediatrics, they have really rare diseases. In medicine, there's a term called zebras, which are basically like rare diseases, but med students are really good at thinking of them because we get taught the zebras. So we see like some patient presentation and sometimes medical students like miss the very obvious thing and the more common things, but they're able to like list off zebras. Anyways, how this relates to peds is apparently, I haven't done peds yet, but apparently it's one of the specialties where you actually do see the zebras, like weird genetic defects, um, weird like metabolic issues. And the reason why you see it in peds is because oftentimes these patients don't live to adulthood. So you only see these diseases in the younger population. Yeah, those are my thoughts on peds. Anyways, I'm gonna go have some lunch. All right, so today we have to do some grocery shopping because there's no food left in the house. So for lunch, I'm just having a toasted bagel with cream cheese. Probably suboptimal, but that is okay. I mean, I just ate craft dinner yesterday, so like, who am I to judge the food selection in this house? All right, it is time for lunch part two. I've got some green pepper, red onion, and bacon. I basically cooked this up because it was all that was left in my fridge, but it's actually not a bad combination. The bacon's a little salty, the onion's a little sweet, so we got a sweet and salty situation going on. I would recommend. Okay, so we just had a lecture on like how to learn slash how to survive medical rotations, specifically when we are in the CTU, which stands for Clinical Teaching Unit. And I knew this before, but I think it's just hitting me for real this time. During this talk, they're basically saying like, you're going to see patients, you're going to be responsible for rounding on them, and you're also gonna be responsible for coming up with a plan. Excuse me? plan? I, a second year medical student who feels like they know absolutely nothing, is going to have to think of a plan for each patient that I encounter? What? Who is letting us do this? That just... that blows my mind. I think it's just, it's such a weird jump because we've been sitting in lecture, we've been studying and it's been all like fun and games reading the books, but now we have to think about things and come up with plans and then people are going to follow our plans in order to deliver patient care. That excites me a lot, but it also <laughs> scares me. And obviously like, you don't just make a plan and then everyone's like, great, sounds good. You make a plan and then you get shut down by your resident or attending if it's not the correct plan. You get corrected, you learn, and then you revise the plan. And then people follow the plan. So it's not like you're just 
pushed out on your own, make a plan, good luck. It's a collaborative learning experience, but you're still making a plan. Hey guys, it's Editing Kian. I was just watching that last clip back and I realized it probably doesn't really make sense if you're not in medicine. So allow me to explain. When a patient comes to hospital, there are a few things that we have to document. First, when they get admitted, you write an admission note. And this is a really helpful note because it gives physicians a heads up as to why they're here, what you think is going on, their past medical history, the medications that they're currently on. It's just like the background story for the patient. And then throughout their course in hospital stay, you write progress notes. And the format that is often taken is called a SOAP note. So S stands for subjective. That's basically what the patient says. So you say, hey, how are you feeling? And if they're like, oh, I feel ill, that would go in subjective. Or they could be like, oh, I'm feeling great. And then you have the O, which stands for objective. And things that go in here are findings on physical exam or lab results. So these are more like measurements that you're taking. And then assessment. Assessment is what you think is going on. It could be a diagnosis. It's synthesizing the subjective and objective parts of your SOAP note. And then P stands for plan. So you take your assessment and you decide, okay, what am I going to do about this? Or what should be done about this? And that's your plan. So medical students are often responsible for writing both the admission notes as well as the SOAP notes. And what this means is that if you have a plan such as switch them to a normal diet or remove chest tube, those are things that you write down in the plan and then other people, when they read the note, they'll go and do what you've told them to do. And then when the patient leaves the hospital, we write a discharge summary or a discharge note. And this often gets forwarded to specialists that they are following up with, as well as their family doctor, and it describes their course in hospital, as well as new medications that they might be on since discharge. So it's kind of like an update, a conclusion to their hospital stay. So we just finished our last lecture of the day. It's 4 p.m. We've had back-to-back -back lectures all day, and I'm exhausted. Um, got my face mask on, because that's how we roll when we have... <laughs> Like she's at home on Zoom and don't need our cameras on. Good morning, today's Friday. Just went outside and we have a package. I think it's one of the textbooks that I ordered. I'm pumped that this book has practice questions. I think that especially if the practice questions of a textbook are formulated similar to your test questions. It's a great way to sort of be actively engaged in your readings and you can use them as a pretest, a post-test, and just kind of better integrate the knowledge into your brain. So hopefully I use this book and I don't get so busy that I can't study. Anyways, on this fine Friday, we don't have lectures until the afternoon, so Jennifer and I are back at it again working on our flex paper. Alrighty, well, it is Friday night, so I'm going to close the vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed the style of vlog. I don't know, I'm trying to find a happy balance between like the editing side and trying to make the vlog like fancy. I don't know, you know, like high quality camera, cool edits, color grading, but also just talking because <laughs> I think that's why you're here, just to hear what med school is about. So let me know in the comments what you think, um, what kind of things you like in the vlogs, what you don't, because at the end of the day, if you are subscribed, I want to make videos that you enjoy because that is way more fun for me. Anyways, that is all for me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!